So I'm following up the previous video with a very similar looking equation uh, and a very similar looking diagram as well. So we're going to find the polar coordinates of the point P on the curve R squared equals sine 2 theta. So previously we had just R equals sine 2 theta. Now we've got R squared equals sine 2 theta, where theta is restricted between 0 and pi over 2 inclusive, where the curve has a tangent perpendicular to the initial line. So the point P is the point on the curve where there is a tangent line that is perpendicular to the initial line. So that makes a right angle there. So we can consider the Cartesian coordinates of P. Although we want to find the polar coordinates, we can consider the Cartesian coordinates, thinking that's R, because that's the distance from the origin, and that's your angle theta, with an x coordinate of R cosine theta and a y coordinate of R sine theta. So the x coordinate, x is equal to R cosine theta. Now, as we've seen in the previous videos, uh, we're going to be looking at dy by dx, which can be written as dy by d theta, use the chain rule, uh, times d theta by dx, which we can then rewrite as dy by d theta over dx by d theta. So because we are looking at a tangent that is perpendicular to the initial line, we will need dx by d theta to be zero. Okay. So that is why we need x equals r cosine theta, because I'm going to need to differentiate to get dx by d theta. Now we've got a bit of a problem because We've got r squared equals sine 2 theta, not r equals. So you could, theoretically, I guess, uh, square root both sides and find r equals the square root of sine 2 theta and substitute that in there. But that's going to be a little bit more difficult to work with. I'd prefer not to work with the square roots if I can. So to avoid that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides of this in order to get r squared. So I'll be able to replace the r squared with the sine 2 theta. So x squared is equal to um, r squared cosine squared theta. So squaring everything. OK. Now, I need to replace the r squared with sine 2 theta. So x squared is equal to sine 2 theta cosine squared theta. Now I need to get dx by d theta, but I don't have x equals. So I'm going to have to differentiate this implicitly. So the left hand side will differentiate to 2x dx by d theta. The right hand side, I'll need to use the product rule. So I have the first times the derivative of the second. Now, cosine squared theta, the two will come down to the front. The derivative of the inside is sine theta, which comes outside. And I take one from the power. So um, minus sine theta, and I take one from the power. So I'm going to get minus two. I'll have the sine two theta first, I think. Now, the derivative of the inside was minus sine theta, so that's come out. So I've got the minus sine there already. So sine theta, and I'll drop one from the power, so cosine theta. OK, right, then plus the second times the derivative of the first, which will be 2 cosine 2 theta cosine squared theta. Now, because we need dx by d theta to be 0, I can substitute that for 0 in right here. That 2x, I don't need to worry about anymore. So I'm going to have 0 equals. And oh, I'll, I'll just write it out again. So minus 2 sine 2 theta, sine theta, cosine theta, plus 2 cosine 2 theta, cosine squared theta. Right, OK. Now, 
At this stage, I can divide through by two, so I can get rid of the two, so that's fine. Um, I've got the sine two theta and the cosine two theta. So at some point, I'm probably gonna be using double angle formulae. And it probably makes sense to go straight in with replacing the sine two theta with two sine theta cos theta. So, I did say I was gonna divide through by two. I think I'm gonna leave it. So I'll leave them there, otherwise we're gonna get a little bit confused about where the twos have gone to. We'll, we'll divide through in a moment. So, we've got minus two times two sine theta cos theta, times sine theta times cosine theta. So we'll have minus four sine squared theta, cosine squared theta, plus two cosine two theta, cosine squared theta. Okay, so I'll just leave that one alone. That one becomes that, okay? Now I can factor out the cosine squared. I will divide through by two now as well. So zero equals factoring out the cosine squared theta, dividing through by two, I'm gonna be left with cosine two theta, take away two sine squared theta. So, now it's time to replace the cosine two theta with a double angle formula. Now, it makes sense to have the one minus two sine squared theta because I've already got minus two sine squared theta there. So I'll have one take away two sine squared theta, take away another two sine squared theta, so one take away four sine squared theta. Okay, so now either the cosine squared theta is zero or sine squared theta is one quarter. Now if cosine squared theta is zero, then cosine theta would have to be zero. And if sine squared theta is a quarter, that means that either sine theta is one half or sine theta is minus one half. Okay. So, cosine theta equals zero. Quick sketch of cosine. There's your pi over two. So that's where it's zero. So theta equals pi over two. Sine theta equals one half. So here's your sine curve. And there's one half. Here's your solution. There's pi over two. So there's only one solution. So inverse sine of one half is pi over six. Sine theta equals minus pi minus one half other. We'll have no solutions in the range. So when theta is pi over two, um, we're going to have r squared is equal to sine of pi. Sine of pi is zero, so r would have to be zero. So zero pi over two is this point here that we're not interested in. We're interested in P. So P. Um, so we need pi over six substituted into this. So R is equal to the square root of sine of two theta. So square root of sine of two lots of pi over six, so pi over three. And we're getting 0.9306 to four decimal places and the angle pi over six. So they, or well that rather, is the uh, polar coordinates of point P.